Simnola is my favorite place. Why is Simnola your favorite place? Because I get to do activities. Good afternoon. Welcome to STEM NOLA's first STEM at home. I'm Dr. Calvin Mackey, the founder of STEM NOLA. I just want you all to know that we miss you all. We miss exposing and inspiring and engaging the community in hands-on STEM. And we've been working very hard to pivot during this COVID time to make sure that we can continuously engage you where you are, thus STEM at home. Uh, in the last six years, STEM NOLA has engaged over 40,000 kids and 10,000 families and over 1,000 professionals and college students. And we're happy to say now that we'll be able to bring that high level effective engagement right into your home. If you go to stemnola.com, we've created over 50 activities, parents, that you can do at home with your kids, with your students, and these activities are for all grade levels. And we will continue to do this because our kids need to understand that right now, the entire world is waiting for STEM to save it. We've never seen anything like this pandemic that we're experiencing, but when we come out of it, you better believe that it will be someone, some people, or the entire apparatus of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics that's gonna save the world. And that's why it's so important for us to continuously engage our kids so that they can believe, so that they can know that they can be one of those people one day that come up not only with a cure for cancer, but a cure for the next novel coronavirus. Welcome to STEM at Home. I am so excited. And today, we're going to be studying the lung. At STEM NOLA, we believe that STEM should be uh, culturally and environmentally relevant. So our first STEM at Home lesson should be relevant to what we're experiencing today. And what we're experiencing right now is a public health catastrophe, but a STEM disaster. And a public health catastrophe is based on this virus that attacks our immune system and our lungs. So today we're gonna to have an entire presentation around the lungs, what the, what the why and the how of the lungs. I have one of my good buddies here today, Dr. Eric Griggs, community health educator, who's gonna make this simple and plain for you. And you can see I have some of our toys up here. We have lungs. And then we're gonna have one of our great experienced STEM NOLA educators, Lamar Hall, present to you on how to make your own lung and the what, the why, and the how of it and how to operate it. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you all for chiming in. And we look forward to you all uh, uh, coming back every Thursday. After we do this, this is going to be recorded and put online. So if you like it, tell your friends and other parents, you know, to check it out. Even if you don't have the supplies today, you can get the supplies later. Come back and look at the video and make your lung. So again, thank you all for coming. And now I'm gonna ask my boy, Dr. Eric Griggs, to come in and do what he does. And you all can see that we are practicing all the things that we're supposed to be doing during this epidemic. Dr. Griggs. Wow, hello. Uh, we talk about a new COVID normal. This must be Definitely a new world we're in, because Dr. Mackey could never stand this close to something that looks as gross as these. What we have in front of us are sheep lungs, and we'll get to that later. I want all of you to get your ooh, ooh out, and where did they get the sheep from? Where did they get the lungs? We'll get to that later. What's most important is we're talking about the respiratory system. Let's start with the basics. COVID-19. COVID-19 stands for Coronavirus Disease 2019. It's that simple. COVID-19. The reasons we're, that we're practicing social distancing means being, being six feet or two elbows at least away from each other is because we know it works. Back a hundred years ago, there was this thing called a pandemic and it was with the flu that we have these days, but it wiped out almost a third of the planet. So the only thing that they knew to do was stay away from each other. Uh, some doctors were calling it miasma or bad air. They knew if they stayed in the house and they stayed at least six feet away from each other, they wouldn't die, literally wouldn't die. That's all we have right now. The reason we call it a novel coronavirus is because this is the first time that a virus has jumped from animal into our system in our lifetime. It happens every uh, 100 years and we as humans have no defense. 
We don't have any vaccines, we don't have any drugs, but we know that staying away from each other and wearing a mask like this to keep our hands and our bugs to ourselves. This mask prevents us from breathing out or respiring uh, virus particles into someone, in, into the environment for someone else to pick up. I know that's a whole lot. I'm gonna have four basic words that I want you to remember today, and they are the respiratory system, which is breathing in and out. I'm gonna talk about your trachea. If everyone take a finger and point to their Adam's apple, it's part of your trachea. And I'm gonna give you a cool exercise to explain that. The other one is your lung capacity, the ability for you to breathe in, how much air you breathe in, and how much air you breathe out. I can't breathe out tough. How much air you breathe in, and how much you breathe out. And the last one, I'm gonna jump when I say it, and you'll understand why, is your diaphragm. It's your hiccup muscle. It's like, it works almost like a bellows system to help you breathe. Remember, we want to talk about our trachea, our respiratory system, our diaphragm, and our lung capacity. Now, before we can talk about abnormal, I want to talk about a little bit of normal, and then we're going to get the gross lungs, and I guarantee you won't be able to get Dr. Mackey within six feet because he can't, this is not his thing. Uh, what happens is we're talking about, about a, a disease of the air. The purpose of the respiratory system is for us to breathe in air to get oxygen to our bodies. So if you're sitting down, I want you to stand up. Air comes in through our nose and our mouth as we breathe in, and then it goes down through this hard part in your throat called the trachea. And if you take one finger and stick it at that notch on your Adam's apple, that's the top part of your trachea or your larynx. Inside your larynx, it's like this, are two of these things that look like this. They're your vocal cords. And I want you to say vocal cords. Use your vocal cords. That's how we make noise. Ah! Vocal cords. It goes down the trachea, then it branches out into these longer things called bronchi. Then it goes to bronchioles, and at the very tips are little balloons. If you can imagine having balloons on the tips of your finger, they're things called alveoli. Say it, alveoli. Say it again, Mufasa. At the alveoli level is where the exchange, as you breathe in, the oxygen comes into your blood and goes to your heart. If you remember, anybody remembers, right atrium, right ventricle, back to the lungs. Ah, this is the magic. Left atrium, left ventricle, then out to the body, and the body's oxygenated. There's oxygen everywhere. Now, I said a lot, but I'm going to make it so you can really remember it. You're going to breathe in lung, breathe in air, rather, to our nose and our mouth. And we're going to pretend that our body is the trachea from the lung, I mean the air, from the nose and mouth to the trachea, then it goes out to the ventricles, I mean the, I got me caught up with the heart, the, to the bronchi, then to the bronchioles, and to the alveoli. Let's do it one more time. In through the nose and mouth, down the trachea, and remember that that's Adam's apple, and then inside the, which is called the, the trachea, the uh, larynx, and there's vocal cords inside of it, and as we breathe out, ah! Ah, say ah, they vibrate. In the nose and mouth, down the trachea, through the larynx, where they have the vocal cords, down to the trachea, out to the bronchi, then the bronchioles, then to the alveoli. Now, I'm going to show you on our sheep lungs where this is the healthy part. And then I'm going to tell you real quickly what happens with COVID-19. This is our healthy lung. As we breathe in or we respire in our respiratory system, you can see it's healthy and it's pink and the oxygen goes where it needs to go, and that's why it looks so pink and healthy. It breathes in and breathes out, and oh, I forgot one of the most important parts. What helps dictate this, I'm stepping on a pedal here, but it's our diaphragm, say diaphragm. If anybody's ever had the hiccups, <laughs> they understand it's a, a muscle spasm of the diaphragm. So we breathe in air through our nose and mouth, down our trachea, bronchia, bronchioles, but what dictates everything is our diaphragm. Hiccup with me, <laughs> hiccup. Yeah, well, y'all get it, right? Um, so what happens is, this is where the problem comes in. Not at the diaphragm, but the alveoli. The virus is a respiratory virus. So it comes in and attacks the cells of our lungs inside where our alveoli are. And what happens is it causes the pneumonia. The pneumonia causes fluid to build up in the alveoli, and it grows more and more and more, so it gets harder to breathe. And as it gets harder to breathe and fills up with fluid, you can't exchange oxygen, which is why it affects everything in the body. And people get very really sick. This is called a stethoscope. You put this in, the doctor or healthcare provider puts it in their ears so they can listen to your lungs. And as, my lung, as your lungs sound clear, it sounds like, ah, do it with me. 
<sighs> but as the lungs have fluid, like this lung that we'll see, it becomes more bubbly, like a <sighs> And you can hear if anyone has asthma, you can hear something called wheezing. That's why this virus is so bad. It sounds like, it pretends and sounds like other things, so we try to, it, it, it makes us blow it off as though it's not as serious as it, is, as it is and we die. So this one I want us to take a look at. This would be a virus, it's not a smoker's lung, even though you shouldn't smoke because it makes you more susceptible or more prone to getting the virus, but this is a virus, a, a lung that would have COVID-19. As you can see, as it would fill up with fluid, if I'm quiet, which is hard for me, you can hear it wheeze. And as that fluid builds up, less and less oxygen gets to the tissue. You get short of breath because you're trying to breathe. And it gets harder and harder to the point that you have to go to the hospital. And sometimes you have to end up on a machine that will breathe for you. And it's called a ventilator. It takes over your respiratory system for you. And that's when things can be really bad and sad. But the good news is that most of us survive. And that's good to know. 80 to 90 percent of us will survive. But the problem is it's a lot to go through. You can get really, really sick. So what we want you to do is we want you to make sure that your parents, and if you're listening, I want you to take your blood pressure medications. I want you to take your diabetes medications. Kids, if you have a parent that smokes right now, I'm challenging you. Your parents, Dr. Mackey told me to do this, so you can come get him, not me. Go get their cigarettes and throw them in the trash. Every time they smoke a cigarette, grab it, throw it in the trash, stomp on it. They shouldn't be smoking because they could die of COVID. Throw them in the trash and tell them Dr. Mackey told you to do so, and Dr. Pierce didn't have nothing to do it. I want you to go, go over again. The lungs, the healthy lungs are four words for today that we want to remember. We want to remember respiratory system, the trachea, or Adam's apple, the, the beginning is the Adam's apple, that goes out to the bronchi and bronchioles. I want us to remember that diaphragm or hiccup muscle, and I have forgotten the last one, but that's okay. We'll cover it uh, at some point. Lamai, I'll pick up the, the slack for me. Happy point at your stomach. I, I think I said diaphragm. Um, one last demonstration with the gross uh, lung capacity. Doc, Dr. Maggie, correct me with lung capacity, but I bet you won't come touch these lungs. Um, again, here's the lungs. This is the healthy lung. Once the virus gets in your system, it can look like this, and you can see how bad that can be. Dr. Mackey said to throw away your parents' cigarettes and pluck them out of your, their, their, their hands every time they do it. This is bad. This is a COVID-19 lung. This is a healthy lung. Remember, wash your hands. Stay your six feet away from you. Be careful and wear your mask. Keep your hands and your bugs to yourself. And remember, we belong together. We belong, we belong together. Now we're going to move on with the program. Lamaya's coming in to build a lung. We're going to have some real fun today. Six feet. Six feet. Hey everyone, my name is Lamaya Hall, and I'm here today to talk to actually take you through a lung build where you're going to build your own lung. I've been with Sonola for about three to four years, and I really love it. It's so much fun. I enjoy making things, and I actually learn some things myself. I have a current degree in biology, and right now I'm actually getting my master's in public health. And soon I'll be applying to medical school, which is really exciting, which is why I love the lungs. It's really fun. But let's go on ahead and before I start and before we go over anything today, let me ask y'all a quick question. Let's see, what do the lungs do? I want you guys to look at the poll that's on, um, that shows up on your screen and answer that question for me. I'll give you a couple seconds. All right, so as you all can see, your lungs, yes, they help you breathe, which is a very important part. So let's go on ahead and talk about the things that we're going to do today. So we went ahead and we did our intro. Um, so next we're going to go through, we're going to go through some, the objectives for today. Then we're gonna go through the questions. We have a couple questions that we want you guys to um, <clears throat> be able to answer by the end of today. And then, we're going to actually go into our mechanical lung build. Then we'll have some time for some questions and answers at the very end. Um, so let's begin today. What's our purpose of being here? Why are we here? So we want you guys to understand the terms that um, 
Dr. Griggs talked about the trachea, your diaphragm, lung capacity, um, and <clears throat> the respiratory system. So before we begin, let's actually do a quick activity. Let's talk about um, our lung capacity. So we said our lung capacity was how much air our lungs can hold, right? So let's see how much air our lungs can hold. We're gonna grab one of the balloons that we're going to use for our experiment today. We're gonna inhale, which means we're gonna take a really deep breath. And what happens to our diaphragm? Our diaphragm pulls down, so it can make room for our lungs to expand. So we're gonna inhale, and then we're gonna blow into the balloon. All right, I'm gonna count down and let's do it together. Ready? One, two, three. Inhale, then blow. Uh-oh. <laughs> As you can see, my lungs do not hold that much air, <laughs> but it's all right. Let's see, <clears throat> I want you guys to see how much your lungs can hold. You may want to do it a couple times later and do it as a competition with your family to see. Let's go, let's go one more time. Ready? One, two, three. Inhale, then blow. Much better. So much better. You see that? Got the lungs of a champ. <laughs> All right. So let's go on ahead and go into our build for today. So we're going to end up building one of these mechanical lungs. So there's actually a poll question about this. It's going to ask you, just to keep you guys, you know, interactive. It's going to ask you, what are we building today? So I'm going to give you a couple seconds for you guys to go through it. And um, answer that for me. Yes, that is correct. We are building a mechanical lung today. It's really fun. Um, it's a cool activity to do at home with your family. So let's go on ahead and begin. First, let's start with like Dr. Griggs talked about, let's, let's review a little bit. Lungs and the coronavirus. So our lungs is what help us breathe, right? And the coronavirus actually attacks our lungs, so it makes it hard for us to breathe. And like Dr. Griggs said, when it's really hard for you to breathe, you may have to be put on something called a ventilator, which is a machine that actually breathes for you. So if, you're, if you've ever heard the word novel, um, when they use the, for coronavirus, all it means is new. It just means it's a new virus. That's it. So let's go on ahead and look at our materials for today. First, you're gonna need an empty water bottle here. You're gonna need this empty bottle. Make sure it has a cap on it. Some of your parents may have already, um, their, your water bottle may be cut at the bottom or there may be holes poked in the top, which is completely fine. That just means your parents pre prepped some things for you. You will also need a piece of cardboard some of your parents may have cut it already, um, but if not, we're gonna go through um, and we're gonna cut out a slither of cardboard about an inch long. You're going to need two straws, three rubber bands, some tape, some scissors, and then some balloons. I have two blue and a red. All right. So our first step today, we are going to cut the bottom of the bottle off. So a tip with cutting the bottom of the bottle off is to go on ahead and remove the cap so that air isn't trapped inside and it's not hard for you to um, cut it. So please be careful using your scissors. We don't want you guys to get hurt. Parents, if you need to assist, go on ahead and assist um, your child with cutting this bottle. And you're just gonna cut about one inch off And I know it's hard to cut it evenly, but you can just, you know, try to cut as even as possible. There may be like some sharp edges that could cause a possible paper cut. So if you want to just maybe trim some edges off if it's way too um, pointy, just like I did. And so now your bottle should look like this right here. So 
our second step. We're going to take one of our balloons and we're going to cut off the tip. Don't cut off the, the neck of the balloon where you blow. We're going to cut off like the tip of the balloon here. And we're only going to cut maybe about half an inch off. And you may have to like pull, pull it down, add some tension so that your scissors can get through that rubber of the balloon. Just like that. So now your balloon should look like this. And this you can really throw away. All right. So the part with the cardboard. Um, so if you don't have a strip cut already, go on ahead and cut you a strip of cardboard. Cut it about um, one inch wide. Maybe if you have a 16 ounce bottle, um, it's going to need to be nine inches long. Um, but if your bottle's a little bigger, you may want to do it, maybe add an inch or two to it, just in case. It's all right to have more um, rather than less. And I'm going to give you guys a couple seconds in case if you have to cut your cardboard. All right. So. What we're gonna do with this cardboard that we've done, that we've cut, we're going to take it and we're gonna basically form like a circle, like this right here, and we're going to put it inside the bottom of the bottle that we just cut off and tape it inside to provide support. So you're gonna take your bottle, you're going to take um, your cardboard and you're just gonna slide it into the bottom of the bottle just like this. So then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna grab our tape and we're gonna tape it to the, around the edge of the bottle because you need the support and you need it not to slide around. So we're gonna add some additional support to it. So all you have to do is just slide a piece of tape on the inside of the cardboard and just wrap it around the outside of the bottle. You may wanna use like four to eight pieces of tape um, depending on how much support you feel like you need but I normally do just four pieces evenly, as even as I can around the bottle. And make sure to be careful with the, um, with the bottle too, because it can still give you a paper cut. All right. So I have my support, it's in there good. This is just so that when you add the balloon to the bottle, it doesn't cave in on itself because that can happen. So what we're going to do with our balloon is we're gonna take it, we're gonna stretch it out a little bit and then we're going to put it on the bottom of our bottle. So you may just wanna stand the bottle up on its top and just stretch it around. Parents, you may have to um, help the student hold the bottle, help your child hold the bottle. So that you can get it all the way around. It's taking me a little time to actually get the balloon on. There we go. And it'll sit at the bottom just like this. So what we're going to do to secure it is we're going to add some tape. Um, you may want to take like pretty long pieces of tape because you're going to wrap it around the whole um, balloon that's at the bottom. And you may want to wrap it twice to make sure that it's a pretty tight seal. So I actually do two layers of tape when I do this. And you're just taking a piece and you're just wrapping it around the balloon. Just like that. And let's do one more pretty long piece. All right. 
and we should be good. Now your bottle should look like this right here with your balloon at the bottom. So our next step is we're going to actually tie off the balloon. The balloon needs to be tied off so that it'll provide an airtight seal when we add the balloons on the inside so that it's able to function correctly. So you may just want to like stretch the neck a little bit because the way that you tie it, so you need your middle finger and your index finger. And you're going to wrap the neck of the balloon around your fingers. And then you're gonna come up and over like in between your two fingers and pull that little tip of the balloon through. And then when you pull it, you should have a knot. Just like that. So when you do it, let's use a second balloon so I can show you how to do a knot. So when you do it, just take the neck, stretch it a little bit. You're gonna take your middle finger and your index finger. You're going to wrap the balloon around. It's going to come up. It's gonna come up and over, just like that. And then you're going to push it through in between where your two fingers are. So it looks like that. And then you're gonna slide your fingers out and pull. Just like that right there. So let's go on ahead and go to our next step. Some of you guys, your holes may already be poked in the top um, of your water bottle cap. If they aren't, Parents, please um, help your student do help your child do this part because um, we just don't want them cutting themselves because you'll actually have to pick it up and open in your scissors and put a hole in it. So we're going to make two holes. They're going to be side by side, and they have to be big enough for the straws to fit through. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our scissors. We're going to put it closer to the um, right edge. You're going to poke the hole and then you're going to twist your scissors look at me dropping stuff twist your scissors and to check to make sure if your straw just check to make sure if your straw can go through if your straw can go through then your hole is big enough try not to make your hole way too big um, just enough so your straw can fit snugly into the hole so we're gonna do it again for the opposite side. Make sure they're pretty even, um, but make sure they're not too close to where when you do the hole, like it'll merge into one big hole. You don't want that. So we're gonna poke another hole, put our scissors in, twist. Make sure our hole's big enough. And let's check and see. And make sure that when you're putting your straw in that it doesn't pinch your straw. Um, that means your hole's a little too tight. You may want to open it up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give y'all a couple, like a minute to go on ahead and do this part because I know it takes a little while. Again, make sure that your holes are big enough for your straw to fit through. Um, if you're having trouble sliding your straw through, just take your scissors and twist it through the hole to make it a little bigger. And don't forget to, to check. Go on ahead and check to make sure your straw fits through. All right. So our next step, you're gonna take, you're gonna pull out both of your straws we're gonna do this one straw at a time. So we're gonna add tape to the middle of the straw. This provides some type of airtight seal when our straw goes through the holes of our bottle cap. So you're gonna take a pretty decent piece of tape, maybe like six inches, and you're going to put it in the center of the straw. And to me, the best way to do it is you hold the straw with one hand and you hold the tape with the other and just spin your straw. 
but make sure and you hold the tape with the other hand to control that it's staying on track and it's not going down um, one end or the other. So now you should have tape in the middle of your straw. So let's do that for our second straw as well. So again, take about a six inch piece of tape. We're gonna put it in the center and we're going to roll while holding our tape. I'm gonna give you guys a couple seconds to go on ahead and complete that step. So where you have two straws with tape in the middle. And again, this tape is to provide an airtight seal um, when you insert your straws into the cap. All right, so let's go on ahead and move to the next step. Our next step, we're going to insert our straws into our cap. So you're gonna insert the straw all the way until it's about halfway through the tape. So you're gonna push your straw through and try to wiggle your tape in there and make sure it's secure. If your straw goes through there way too quick and there's no resistance when you're pulling, then you may want to add a couple more layers of tape um, on top of the tape you already have on your straw. So let's go on ahead and take the second straw and push it through the second hole. And if your straw with your, with your tape isn't fitting at all, either there's one or two options you can do. Either you can um, take some of the tape off your straw or you can make your hole just a little bit bigger. But remember, we don't want the um, the hole to, I mean, the straw to pinch at all. So now your top should look like this here. And I'm gonna give you guys a minute to go on ahead and um, do this part. And if you've completed this part, go on ahead and get out your two balloons and two rubber bands. All right. So once you've completed the top um, with your straws in there, we're going to attach our balloons at the bottom. Make sure your balloons are going on the side of the cap where like you would twist it down, like it would go, the balloons would be inserted into the bottle. So you want your balloons to be in here, not outside. So you're gonna take your balloon, you're gonna slide it about maybe two inches into the, um, slide your straw two inches into the balloon, just this far, if you can see. And we're gonna take our rubber band and just wrap it around the balloon where the straw is. Make sure that when you're wrapping your rubber band that it's not so tight that your um, straw is pinched. And I will show you guys how to test to make sure that your balloon um, is on there correctly. So let's go on ahead and wrap our rubber band. Make sure it's secure, but not too tight to where it's pinching. And then you're gonna repeat this with your second balloon. Just like this. So this is our first balloon. So to make sure that your balloon is on here correctly, just take the straw, the top of the straw it's attached to and blow and your balloon should inflate. When you do this, do not try to blow the balloon up as big as it can go. Don't let it, don't try to blow it up really crazy big. Just literally put a little air in it to make sure it goes all the way through. If it does not go all the way through, either your, your straw is pinched at some point. So you need to check the cap to make sure it's not pinched at the cap. And you need to check the where the rubber band is and make sure it's not pinched at the rubber band. Um, if your rubber band's too tight, just go on ahead and loosen it up. And if it's pinched at the straw, either make the hole bigger or take some tape off. 
So now we are going to go through, go to our second balloon and we're gonna do it the same exact way. Again, make sure that your straw isn't pinched and just wrap your rubber band as tightly as you can. Let's get one more wrap in. All right. Again, go on ahead and test to make sure that your balloons are working. You can just blow them both straws at the same time. They both inflate, so we're good. So we've got two more steps. So this one, we're just gonna insert the balloons down into the top of the bottle, but make sure you're not making the uh, straws like hit the edge of the bottle, or you're not trying to force it too much so that your straws don't end up pinching or folding or have any type of pinch. You may wanna, cause my balloons were a little weird. You can like shake them around if they get stuck on top of each other or something to make sure that it's all right. They're in there correctly. All right. So at this point, <clears throat> you should have, your balloon should look like, your um, lungs should look like this and twist your top on as tightly as possible. And the part that we made with the straws, we actually do it with K through two as well, except they just do the, they have their trachea and they have their lungs. They don't go with the diaphragm at the bottom like we do. However, to show that how our lungs work, we breathe in, right? So we're going to put air into these balloons and they inflate. So we breathe in, air goes through our trachea and inflates our lungs. And that's the concept we teach with K through second. All right, so our last step, we are going to take our last rubber band and we're going to tie it around the top two, um, the top two straws. Make sure it's not too tight, make sure they aren't pinched. And this is our trachea. So the way to operate this, you do not blow in it to make it work you pull down the bottom balloon and the lungs inside will inflate. It may be just a little, but you can still, you should be able to see the results. When I pull down, you can see the top of my balloons inflate. But let's get a better visual with our bigger model. So when I pull down this bottom balloon, my lungs inflate. And if you listen carefully, you can actually kind of hear them breathe. You can hear the air going in and out of the bottles, I mean, of the straw. So let's go on ahead and talk about what all of this is. What does it mean? What is it supposed to represent? The bottom balloon is actually supposed to represent your diaphragm. Like we talked about earlier, your diaphragm is the thing that pulls down and um, contracts and relaxes when you breathe. So when we Inhale our balloons, which are our lungs, fill with air, and our diaphragm is contracted and pulled down. And then when we let it go, our diaphragm relaxes and our um, balloons deflate. And this at the top, these two straws at the top represent our trachea. This right here, remember we said it's the windpipe. This is the um, <clears throat> this is the portion of the lung model build that represents the windpipe where your air goes in and out. So now that we are done with our build, let's go on ahead and go through our questions again. So our first question was, what on the lung model represents the diaphragm? Please answer this question on the poll that's just popped up on your screen. I'll give y'all a couple seconds.
All right. Yes, the bottom balloon represents your diaphragm. That is correct. So what, let's go to our next question. What on the lung model represents your lungs? Go on ahead and answer this on the poll that just popped up on your screen. Yes, that is correct. Your two balloons inside the bottle is what represents your lungs. And our last question, what on the lung model represents the trachea? Go on ahead and answer this last question using the poll. Yes, your trachea is represented by the straws at the top. Good job. I really appreciate everyone for participating today, and it was really fun. I enjoyed doing this. So now Dr. Mackey's going to come back on, and he's going to take some questions. So if you have any questions, go on ahead and drop them in the Q&A, and he's going to take some questions. Okay, let's give Lamai a hand. Let's give her a hand clap. Seminole has engaged over 40,000 families, 40,000 kids and 10,000 families, but we are, we are happy to say that we've also engaged over 600 uh, college students as interns uh, here in the region. And in six years, we put over $700,000 in the hands of college students as they've come out, they've helped us develop our curriculum, they've built these kits, they packaged the kits, Parents, I know we went a little fast today, especially kids, you might not was able to keep up. And that's why we're gonna place this video online so you can watch it again. What we really wanna do, to the sponsors out there, to the parents, we know it was a challenge for you to go out and get all of the material, especially during this uh, challenging time of COVID. We are seeking funding now such that once you register, we will mail you the kits. If you're local, we ask you to come pick up the kits at different places that we are partnering with but we don't want anything to get in between uh, what our kids need to know in the 21st century. So we have to make sure that our kids are consistently and are consistently engaged in STEM and STEM knowledge is here to help you do that at home uh, when we get back in a community. And at this point, we are saying no way you are in the world, we want to get this material to you. So if you have any questions and answers, I mean the questions, uh, Dr. Eric Griggs is still here. Uh, Dr. Griggs is a master at explaining this stuff. He's on television uh, locally and nationally, explaining all the different type of health uh, issues. He was just recently with the Surgeon General talking about COVID at the beginning, making sure our community was ready. So remember, wash your hands, wear your mask, and get six feet apart from everybody. And I just want to say, Man has been battling Mother Nature since the beginning of time. Mother Nature throws her venom, and man has been fighting that venom. And there's only three ways we can battle Mother Nature. We only have three tools. The first two is that we can mitigate Mother Nature, i.e. accommodate her, live with her. That's, that's the social distancing part. The second way we can battle Mother Nature is that we can medicate her, therapeutics, medicine. We can treat Mother Nature, venom. And the third part is that we can tame Mother Nature, i.e. vaccinate Mother Nature. Right now, we don't have a vaccination. Right now, we don't have a, a, a treatment. But STEM professionals around the world, researchers are working day and night. There's over 100 different vaccines being tested. So sooner or later, we will, we will tame Mother Nature. So right now, the only thing we have left is to mitigate Mother Nature. And that's the social distancing part. So we got to slow the spread by spreading out. Now, next week, next week, 
we are going to be looking at force, motion, and drag. But I believe we have one question before we move on. Yes, Dr. Mackey, the question is, how are balloons inside the bottle filling with air? How are the balloons inside the bottle filling with air? You want that, Dr. Griggs? It's actually negative pressure. It's the same thing that happens in the body when our diaphragm goes down. It's like a vacuum sealed container, like the balloon is, I mean, like the container is, as the balloon pulls down, the, the pressure pulls the balloons out as the same thing that happens when we inspire. Uh, it's inspiration down, expiration out. It's a negative pressure and it's, it's a passive thing. When we inhale, we force actively pull in air, we force everything down to fill it up, but there's a negative pressure with our diaphragm, expanding and contracting. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, I got a PhD in mechanical engineering and somebody asked why you know, how does the air get in a balloon when you pull down, right? And a medical doctor, a medical doctor, who, you know, he knows a little something, something, but he doesn't know mechanical engineering. He knew that it was negative pressure. And I'm so excited about that because I want you to know that this is a STEM problem. This is just not a health problem. And STEM is more than just medicine. It's more than just technology. So when you're in school, it's important for you to know. People are asking right now, when you're in class and you're taking algebra or some math, you're like, why do we have to know these curves? But every night, every morning, the president, the governor of New York, your, your mayor, is showing you the curve on TV and telling you that we need to lower this curve. Well, that curve is Y equals EX, the exponential curve, one of the most fundamental functions that relate to life and how different things grow in Mother Nature. So this is all interconnected. I'm so happy today I heard a medical doctor use a mechanical engineering term. We're doing some education around it. Well, Notre Dame and Tulane gave you something. <laughs> so I say that to say, for you kids who want to be medical doctors, you have to know my mechanical stuff. And for, my, for people who want to be engineers, you also have to know the biology and the chemistry. And that's why at STEM Nola, we emphasize not only, we, we emphasize all of it, the science, the technology, the engineering, and the mathematics. As Booker T. Washington said, we are separate as the fingers, but it's whole as the hand. And that's why STEM is so important, and I'm so excited. We gotta run, but next week, we'll be doing uh, uh, Force, Motion, and Drag. It has amazing uh, life applications. Uh, we're gonna give you all different types of uh, activities to do. Uh, soon, real soon, all the activity list parents will be listed online so you, so you can find it. If, you, if we were to send you this kit or you were to purchase this kit from STEM NOLA, everything you need. We believe that especially teachers and parents, you shouldn't have to go out and, 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 and do scavenger hunts to engage your kids. So all of our kits are listed online and everything you need are in those kits from the rubber bands to the bottles to everything you need, even the, even the directions. And once you, know, you get that, if you have multiple kids, if those kids get older, you will still have all of that and you can replace the stuff in the kits. But this is my Newton's cradle. And with Newton's cradle, we teach the three laws of motion by uh, Newton's three laws. And next week, we'll show you the three laws of, of, of Newton, uh, three laws of Newton, and also give you something to build so that you will learn about force, motion, and drag. I just want to say thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all for signing in. At STEM NOLA, we are very excited to be able to still reach out to you. And if there's anything that you need from us, uh, don't hesitate to uh, go to the website and uh, send us an email. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever you need, we're here for you. Parents, if you have some additional questions about how you can engage your kids, contact us. But then the next week, we'll be announcing our virtual summer camps that will be open to people all around the country. Thank you all for chiming in. Stay safe, be safe, take care of each other. Bye-bye.